the world of theatre sound. Um, so, like the basics of theatre sound, you know, are similar to a system that you would have at home in that it's a source that creates the sound that ultimately comes out of some speakers. It's just a much more um, technologically advanced and uh, involved system way of doing that, really. The things that we kind of take into account are trying to make the sound feel like it's coming from the action on stage. So a lot of that is about how many speakers we use, where you place those speakers. Um, but also, you know, as in cinema, we tend to tend to put speakers behind the audience, so you'll create like a full surround system so that you can direct the sound within the space uh, from any point, so that you know you can do travelling sound through the space, um, or you can do very localised spot effects. So you might end up putting tiny speakers inside a prop. Um, sometimes we use uh, like a reverse radio mic, so instead of a, a radio mic that sends the sound signal out we use that reversed so you can send sound to a speaker in like a small box. So for instance, in this play, there's a music box, um, but it's actually just a prop music box. Um, and inside that is a very small speaker and a little reversed radio pack so we can send the sound to that. Um, and the way we control the sound is still, we still use sound desks, but they don't tend to be the huge um, things that they used to be. With the shift to digital, they can be a lot smaller than that. and their job is basically to direct the sound, to process the sound, to you know, change the level where that sound is going to, how that sound is processed, whether you put reverb or echo on it. Um, and all the sounds are created by a sound designer and pretty much exclusively nowadays they you know, use, they have turn up with a computer, often a Mac, using a program called QLab um, and they have a huge library of digital sound effects um, so that as they're working through the piece, they can you know, create the whole world of the piece, whether that be like an internal in an office or you know something that's sat on a battlefield or wherever it is, they'll, they'll have prepared a lot of the sound effects in advance, but also they'll have the ability to respond to notes from the director or the actors about specific sounds to change those sounds, um, like what the sound actually is, how it sounds, you know, the length of it, the volume of it, all those things. Um, so that the soundscape can run alongside the action on stage. Um, and, you know, they will work with a team of people initially to set up the system, so to rig all the speakers, to put in the amplifiers, to put in all the cabling. Um, and then once we work through the technical rehearsal and all the sounds are fixed, it's kind of left to a sound technician to, to operate that on a show-by-show -show basis. Um, and sometimes that's a very fixed thing and it's you know just a question of playing back the sounds at the right times but, but equally it's still a role that can interact a lot more with the live action on stage so you may well be doing like a live mix um, and certainly if you're you know sound technician working on a musical it's a total live mix every night um, so it's it, it's quite a integral piece to the way theatre functions you know the job of sound sound operator and sound technician um, and while the technology has changed hugely in the last 20 years, it's kind of the essence of that job has stayed pretty constant, really. Um, yeah. Um, given the resources that we have, it tends to be very kind of, as I say, traditional. So we have a front of house PA that is permanent with speakers that basically cover the entire auditorium. So that can, you can then pan something and make sound come out of a speaker stage left. You can make something come out center or stage right. Um, we have a permanent surround system that's installed on our uh, stalls and our circle which enables you to kind of make the experience more immersive and then a number of speakers that can then be used for spot effects so something attached to a piece of scenery or something kind of you know up in the air on stage that enables you to do birds or kind of you know the sound of an airplane coming from behind you right the way through to kind of upstage so we're, a we're able to kind of deliver on on that basis but in terms of further you know, furthering the way that we we want to work with sound and how designers want to work with sound. We found here at the moment that we've kind of hit a bit of a, a brick wall because it's suddenly, with the advent of, kind of Bluetooth, wireless technology and, and things like that, that you can put speakers anywhere and everywhere um, in order to kind of make the show again feel more immersive, more realistic. Um, 
in terms of that. We tend to use um, digital sound desks here. Um, we own an LS9, which enables you to program basically scenes into that desk and then switch, for, uh, switch to other scenes um, during the show. That can, is all linked up to, again, QLab, which we use to control. And that will do the playback in terms of effects. That will control what the desk is doing in terms of scenes. And when it needs to switch from A to B, that is all pre-programmed in. And the queue stack for that is then called by the deputy stage manager. So during the process and during the production, um, we have one operator who operates both lighting and sound. Once it's all programmed, it tends to be just one button operation. Um, but because of that, in terms of, you know, we don't have three people who s sit at the back and operate the shows. Everything has to be programmed quite intricately. So we kind of use that element of the technology, being able to switch from a variety of different states and scenes and be able to go to a, a variety of different speakers. We use that um, quite a lot in terms of the delivery from sound point of view.